What's up, y'all? Wait, why am I down here peeking in underneath the lid? Well, that's simple. I just got done doing, well, actually, last night, I did a brisket cook overnight. I had a full Packard brisket prime, and my neighbors gave me a prime flat to do on the kettle. So I went ahead and, even though I could get both a, a eight pound flat and a 16 pound packer on this here 22 inch Weber kettle, I decided not to do that. Instead, what I did was I put the flat onto my pellet smoker and I put the packer brisket onto here so I had a little more room to breathe around because I really want to see how the flame boss was going to act if there wasn't as much meat inside there. Watch this video to see how everything turns out. And this idea, actually I got this idea from quite a few people, but Ryan from Grill Top Experience actually suggested because I'm using a barbecue dragon grill stone in here as well, the one that has the little small fracture in it. Well, I just want to see if, uh, and Ryan kind of suggested, well, how about what happens if you put cold meat on there, let the cold fat drip onto the stone? What will it do? Will it, will it crack it? How will it react? I did that test. Watch till the end to see how the barbecue dragon grill stone hung in there. Ryan Bar uh, at Grill Top Experience, I appreciated the suggestion and I did that video for you. So y'all go check out uh, Grill Top Experience at Ryan over Grill Top Experience. I'll put his link down below or I'll put them over here in the iCard like right there. All right, so let's get started and let's see how everything comes out. Now this is a night cook. I'm, I'm recording this right now the following morning. So let's get to it. Okay, so with the Packard right here, I'm not gonna give it any time to rest the flat as well. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the binder on here. You know, we're using the work sauce. It's the only binder I really like to use on beef anymore. I used to use mustard, I used to use, um, I used to use olive oil, but I found that beef is really complimented really good with work sauce. I call it work sauce because I don't really know how to pronounce it very good. Babe, how do you pronounce this stuff? Worcestershire. Is that what it is? Say it, say it out loud, say it, say it again. Worcestershire. Oh. Or Worcestershire, Worcestershire. <laughs> I have no idea. So what I do, I'll put this, uh, I'm gonna put this brisket out there where it's still nice and cold. So, uh, so you have like some cold fat dripping onto that, that stone out there. First layer is gonna be, it's incredible. Get outside right now. The time is right about 10 o'clock, so I'll put this on at 10 p.m. Uh, hopefully, this isn't going to go no more than 12 hours. All right, so let's get outside. So this is how I have it set up. Over here is gonna be three cans. I'm gonna put water in to put uh, humidity in the air. 
Uh, I made kind of like a hole right here, kind of a minion method. Then right here I left it open. Right down below is where the vent is for the flame boss. So I'm not going to try to have any ashes fall down inside there and try to clog it up. Then I've got two uh, pecan logs right there. And I'm going to put the uh, barbecue uh, dragon right on top. Let's get the coals on. Now I had the, um, this has been in room temperature the whole time. There we go. The vent is gonna go this way. The vent is barely cracked and the vents down below are closed. Now it's gonna set my temperatures on a flame boss and I'll be good to go. So let's get the brisket on. All right, well time right now is 10.30 p.m. I have the uh, temperature set at 275 to maintain 275. That's the temperature I like to go at. So this here is set temp. Here's the pit temp, which I don't have the, the pit uh, set yet because I'm waiting to get the meat on. Uh, fan output is this green one right here and then uh, meat temp which I don't have that uh, put on there yet. All that's going to fix and be active. So this is the Flame Boss app and I'll also be using Inkbird today as well but I won't be showing a whole lot of features of that stuff. Alright let's do this. So this side of here is where the point's going to go. So the flat's going to go down here going down meat side, uh, I'm sorry fat side down. Here's the probe. They go a couple inches away and I'm going to be pouring some water into those cans so we have some moisture inside there. So I'll let this get warmed up and I'm gonna come back and pour some water in there. But you don't need to see me pour no water in there because y'all know how to pour water. All right, so right now the Weber kettle is at 221 and the internal temperature of the brisket is at 47 degrees. It's been on now for about six minutes, so, um, but I have the temp probe in the point and I'm fixing to put some of the ink bird probes in the, in the uh, flat as well. So I'll we'll have a full temperature coverage for the Packard brisket. Next, we are going to go over to the, the Camp Chef Pro LUX. Putting, I'm gonna put the uh, flat in this one. All right, so I went ahead and put the probes inside of the brisket already, the brisket flat. So here we go. Check lids at 275 on the Camp Chef Pro LUX. All right, so right now it's like 12 o'clock and uh, this is what the temperatures are doing right now. This is uh, internal of the Weber kettle is at 278. The internal of the point is at 122. I have three probes going into the, the Packer brisket. And I'll show you what the other temperatures are doing for the other ones. All right, so number, let's see, number one and two, that's for the flat over here. Number three and four is for the uh, is for the, the brisket over here. So number three is a halfway part of the Packer brisket, and number four is what it's reading in the flat. So right now it's at 160 in the flat. We're only a, a half an hour and a half into this cook, and we've already got you know temperatures already. Uh, pretty high up there. All right, so this cook isn't gonna take as long as it normally probably would on a select or even a choice brisket. Prime meat, it has the marbleization going through it, so prime meat actually doesn't take as long to cook as you would a, a select or a choice. So I'm thinking that this, the flat's gonna be done in probably under four hours. I'm thinking. Then the Packer brisket, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be done in probably about six to eight hours, even if that. So everything's going good so far. It hasn't hit that stall yet, but that's where it depends on how long it stays in that stall. But being a prime, it's probably not gonna stay in the stall too long. Just wanna give you all a heads up on what's going on. All right, y'all, so it has been two hours on the nose. It is currently 12.30, and the brisket flat has gotten to the 162, 169 sweet spot that I look for to wrap it up. Now, I know a lot of people like to add beef broth and a lot of other things inside that foil, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna just put the brisket in there and just let it marinate inside its own juices. Because on that, uh, that brisket flat, I left some of the fat cap on there so we're gonna let that fat cap render down and uh just kind of like just let it just sit in its own juices so let's get that thing wrapped up look how beautiful that is all right y'all so i'm almost at a three hour mark uh the turret the turret the current temperature 
and the flat is 205 and then 174. 174 is a little bit thicker part, then 205 is what's in the end. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna probably let it go up to probably about 210 in that flat and it should still be okay. Then also, uh, we've also reached the stall right now and the packer brisket. So I've got uh, different temperatures. I've got uh, 163 and 174 in the Packer brisket. And then also in the other temp probe, it is reading, let me see, it's probably gonna change. So I haven't been in a while. Probably gonna be about 162, 163. If you look at the graph right here, you can see right here, see where it's starting to flatten out? That's cause it's in the stall. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull that Packard and I'm gonna wrap that up in foil too. It's 46 degrees out here and I don't have a jacket on. So I'm kind of cold and I'm kind of shivering here. I gotta go get a jacket on. But yeah, that's what's up right now. Alright, so it's been three hours and uh, the Packer brisket has hit the stall and it looks like the, the grill stone still has not snapped. It's still uh, still doing pretty good. I wrapped the brisket. Let me get those probes back in there. I think I was not recording whenever I pulled the brisket out. Um, had a beautiful color, nice mahogany color has is already formed a nice bark on it i don't think i hit the record button i'm so sorry but uh anyhow it looks really good the flat is about to come off the flats come up the temperature and it's only been three hours so three hours for brisket flat pretty good it'll probably go three and a half maybe four hours that's kind of what i told my neighbors it would take is about four hours it's going to be right about four hours the the packer brisket is probably going to be done in about another two more hours and so you're talking five hours oh yeah this is a 16 pound brisket so if you could cook a 16 pound brisket in five six hours you're doing pretty good the temperature i set it for on the flame bosses at 275 but the temperatures that have been fluctuating everywhere is from 25 degrees below and 25 degrees above almost exactly so it's been going from 250 to 300 and it's been pretty wild swings I'll show you if you look at the graph right here you can see where the temperature just dropped down because I opened up the lid but it's been pretty much staying right along the 275 area right there so it's it's kind of doing its job. I mean, I wish it wasn't like that wide of a swing, but you know, I guess that's, I guess it is what it is. All right, y'all. So, uh, just like I said, 45 minutes later. So, we're looking at, no, I'm sorry, 15 minutes later. It's 144 right now. I put this on at 1030. So, we're looking at three hours and 15 minutes brisket flat to get done. Oh, yeah. And an update also on this ink bird. Um, when I first did the ink bird, I didn't realize that if you set the timer that it would actually would graph up to four hours. So that is true. I thought it was only probably about 30 minutes because that's what I was experiencing at the time. But yeah, if you set the full timer on it, with the full timer is four hours. So it will actually will graph four hours. But after you shut it off and you come back, it won't cut, it won't be there no more. I am going to pull the brisket flat off right now because it's done. And I'm not going to cut into the brisket flat because, well, it's not mine, it's my neighbor's. So right now, the prime brisket flat is 196 and for prime, 196 is a perfect temperature. And then this is 167, 174 is what the Packard is right now. And then uh, then the Flame Boss is just all over the place right now. But that should, that's probably gonna update here in a little bit. It's probably gonna change, change. There we go, so it's 170. Then here's the graph right there. Hold on, there you go, right there's the graph. So that's an update. All right y'all, so it is 2.30 in the morning. It's 2.03, I believe that's in the flat. So four hours, this brisket is pretty much done. What I'm gonna do is, uh, and they got 190 that's in the halfway point. Point, it's probably about 201. This hasn't updated yet. So once it updates, it'll be probably over 200. There we go, 202. That's good enough. I'm calling this thing done. I'm just gonna let it, uh, I'm gonna cover it up and I'll revisit this in the morning. So right now it's uh, 2.30 in the morning. You know, let this thing rest for five, six hours. You know what? It's gonna be perfectly fine. And uh, prime brisket, four hours, 16 pounds. I cough about two pounds of fat. So we're looking at probably about a, um, about a 14 pound brisket. Oh yeah, one more thing. Let's see how the barbecue dragon grill stone fared in this test. Does not look like it cracked. There's the water. The water cans worked almost flawlessly. The grill stone did not crack. Did not break rest of the way. Cool.
I'm left at nine o'clock right now. So it's been resting for about six hours, six and a half hours. Um, it might be a little overdone, but I'm not really too concerned. It's a prime brisket. It's gonna be good regardless. So let's get the wrapper off, foil off the pan, and let's see what we got here. from the very outer outer edge right here okay that's the outer edge look how moist that is that is phenomenal okay this is why I don't like to inject Yeah, so this is, uh, we're looking at with the brisket flat. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, it tastes pretty good, man. It's got a nice flavor to it, but then it, uh, it's incredible. And also that uh, Suckle Busters, we joined them together today. Instead of them battling it out and being at opposite corners, they teamed up today. The burnt ends are just, they literally disintegrate. Shouldn't talk while I'm eating. So I might do these, put some butter, some cubes of butter in there, and put some barbecue sauce, and put them in the oven and let them get in there for about, you know, 350 for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And those will be perfect too. And I got, no, I got no complaints. To be quite honest with you, it's actually not as good as my select brisket I did my barrel house cooker. Quite honestly, this is not the best one I've done. And this is prime. My select one in the barrel house cooker beats this, but this is still good, don't get me wrong. It only took four hours to make. Four hours, y'all. Now that's hot and fast. Four hours for this one to be made. The other one was only three and a half, was three and a quarter hours, three hours, 15 minutes. You can't complain there. And the, and the flavor is still there. So, all right, well anyhow, I'm gonna end it right here. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notifications bell to get a notification every time I come out with a video. And uh, I'll see y'all next week. Ciao.